We'll call meeting to order. Uh, we have our first item, which is the adoption of the agenda, motion 2023073, the SSCA Joint Municipal Service Board approves the meeting agenda dated February 1st, 2024. Were there any additions? Councilor Rick. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I'd like to uh, put an item under other business, item 15, and it's relative to uh, correspondence received in. Uh, the question, I just want to put a question to the board as far as the bu existing budget is concerned. <clears throat> Call it the elephant in the room if you wish. And um, yeah, so I'd like to add that as an item. Please. Okay, so I got budget options, a motion under new business. Uh, everyone okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. We will add that. So the uh, motion is now the meeting agenda as amended, dated February twenty or February first, twenty twenty four. It's February. Uh, all those in favor? Did I get a mover and a seconder? No. Moved by Paul, seconded by Suzanne. Uh, declaration of proposal. Oh, we already added in there. Didn't we? Hold on one second. I may not have the. Uh, Motion that I asked you to put it, change for the procedural policy. Oh, Sorry, my apologies, it was not included in the agenda. I also wanted to add uh, we had the, a discussion the last meeting about changing the procedural bylaw, given that we meet every three months, sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, that uh, currently we don't have anything that says when staff can act recommendations from this board. Uh, so we develop some initial language to uh, potentially uh, solve that problem. Uh, anyway, I'd like to add that under new business if any, uh, if there's no objection. Okay. Procedure. So given that we're still all in favor. Okay. The disclosure of pecuniary interest once, twice, uh, gone. The uh, approval of our past minutes. Uh, so we have item 4.1 minutes from the 2023 third quarter meeting of the SSCA Joint Municipal Service Board held on October 26th. Uh, the motion is the SSCA Joint Municipal Service Board approve the minutes of the third quarter meeting. Moved by Danielle, seconded by Glory. You guys all get the first names for the set of counselors and such today. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? Let's carry. Uh, business arising from the minutes. We have the SSCA Joint Minister of Service Board receives a verbal update reactions arising from the minutes. Uh, so I'll turn this over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There were three um, actions coming out of those minutes. One was uh, passing on the report on the state of Severn Sound, so the uh, science report, which isn't complete, so that hasn't been done as of yet. Um, and we've got a lot of presentations on our deck, so we're thinking we're going to wait till we've got some of those out of the way and then offer the, to present to municipalities uh, on the state of reporting when we're closer to finish that. Uh, the policy procedure piece is on the agenda, so that action as well. And uh, the third was the uh, invitation to mayors and CAOs around a 2024 budget discussion and sort of another orientation. Uh, so we have landed on a date of March 7th at 6 p.m., um, just confirming location. Uh, Suzanne, we had talked to you about uh, potentially, or you had suggested potentially penitent machine council chambers. So I think once we've got that confirmed, we will send that back out. But a blanket invitation without the date did go to your mayors, to your uh, CAOs and uh, clerks to go to mayor and council. Um, yeah, and the only, we heard back from one mayor. So we will, as a board, all do our best to talk to mayors about responding and doing stuff, right? Do we know, sorry, <laughs> when, when did that go out, Julie? The date hasn't gone out. That went out December 15th. Oh. The original request oh, for, right. are you interested and would you attend? And you only heard back from one. One. Okay. Yeah, so are which we is fine. We're doing it anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but are we re-inviting... We will send out another invite with the date that, that we've confirmed because okay. I think as we, we agreed that this was an important thing. This was came out of a request from uh, Ted uh, and uh, Jen uh, from the North Simcoe Heads of Council meeting, I guess, and 
October-ish of last year. So uh, it, it'll be good. We get, uh, I mean, sometimes I forget that this is a new term of council. We got some a lot of new players kind of thing. So uh, explaining to our partners all the services we provide, I think, is uh, yeah. It'll be a it'll be a good uh, learning exercise for everybody. Um, and we are even like I know the it went out to mayors and uh, the CAOs. We are encouraging all council members to come correctly, just so they're aware of what we do. Then it all comes down to votes at the table. So I think it's important that mm -hmm. the whole council understands. Uh, and that's something we can discuss. Uh, my recommendation to staff when we had the last discussion was that it would not be open to the public to be like mm -hmm. a, a training mm -hmm. session. Only for the partners. Mm, yes. So, and it gives it gives counselors the opportunity to ask questions that, that they might think look silly if, uh, if and they wouldn't ask if uh, it was public. Um, okay. Uh, was that it? Mm -hmm. My apologies. So with that, uh, <laughs> moved by I think I already got a mover a second. Did I? No, that is. No. Nope. Moved by Mark. Seconded by Suzanne. Uh, that the SSCA Joint Municipal Service Board receives the verbal update, reaction items arising from the minutes of the 2023 Q3 meeting of October 26th as information. All those in favor? That is carried. And we are moving into the election of the chair and vice chair. Oh, I missed one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not on here. Sorry. Uh, three minutes of executive meeting. Okay, so the minutes of the executive committee meeting held January 18th, 2024. Uh, our executive members, uh, as a reminder of myself, Danielle, and Suzanne. Any uh, questions? Uh, I guess first before we have. Uh, uh, we did develop uh, some questions. So as part of that, we uh, as part of that meeting, we decided we were moving ahead with the uh, uh, performance review of our. Executive Director, Ms. Caleb, uh, something that we should do more often, but uh, I think this would be review number three. Uh, so we've been close to every two years. Uh, Suzanne and her background has uh, uh, developed a, a set of questions to hand out to all of the board. So we will uh, distribute those sometime next week and uh, we'll be looking for your feedback. And uh, once we get that, uh, we'll, uh, we'll run through a uh, I sit down and give her the gears <clears throat> sometime uh, in February, okay? Uh, with that, moved by Brian, seconded by Suzanne, that the minutes from the meeting or the executive committee meeting held on January 18th, 2024, be accepted or received. All those in favor? That is carried. Now, I will relinquish the chair for our elections of the chair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it is election time, um, and I'll just read uh, how we go about doing that and our, our policies around that. So the board <laughs> shall by resolution elect a chairperson, the chair, a vice chair, annually uh, at the January board meeting, which unfortunately is now February, but same, 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 almost January from among its members to serve for a term of one year or until his or her appointment by his or her municipality ends, whichever occurs first. So I'll be conducting the election of officers for 2024, acting as chair pro tem. General rules sorry, for election are as follows. Only current directors of the SSEA may vote. Uh, each municipality has one vote. Nominations will be called for three times and will only require a mover. Nominations must affirm, sorry, nominees must affirm they are willing to let their names stand for the position. The closing of nominations will require both a mover and a seconder. In the event of an election, each nominee will be permitted not more than two minutes to speak for the office in the order they were nominated. Upon the acceptance by nominees for the position of office, directors attending online will submit their choice by approved note. Lex, is that still how we're doing that? Um, text or text, sorry, text message to... Um, 7517156804. All right. Do the appointed scrutineers and directors attending in person will submit their ballots to the appointed scrutineers. Positions are required for chair and vice chair of the SSEA for 2024. Must be appointed by members of the SSEA board of directors. Now that I've read the rules, I declare the position of SSEA chairperson and vice chairperson vacant. 
I'm asking for a motion that Nicole Stott, Nicole and John Main be appointed as scrutineers for the 2024 election of SSE officers and further that the ballots be destroyed after the election process. You're not going to tell anyone the results, are you? <laughs> we take our scrutineer position very soon. Yeah. Suzanne, yeah. Yeah. and I have a seconder. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so are there any nominations for SSEA chairperson from the floor? Uh, I nominate Steph. I'll ask a second time, are there any nominations for SSEA chairperson? I nominate Danielle. Okay. I'll ask a third time, are there any nominations for SSEA chairperson? We have a mover and a seconder to close the nominations. Mover to seconder. Thank you. Sorry, go move on. Seconder. Uh, Tay moved. Sorry, and seconder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, Stefan, are you willing to let your name stand at the position of chairperson of the SSEA? I am. Excellent. And Danielle, are you willing to let your name stand? For the position of chairperson, uh, I will decline if um, Steph is willing to let his name stand. I would prefer, um, I think, you know, more experience, and um, I would prefer another position if okay. that is so decided. All right, we would have invited you to make a two minute speech. Would I would like actually do that? really quickly, if you'd All like right. to say something. Um, Thank you very much. I appreciate the nomination. And uh, just so you guys are aware, we did have a discussion and we didn't, uh, I didn't link back in with Susan after the fact is I have now done this seven years. This will be the eighth year uh, in the role of chair. Uh, I absolutely love this organization. It is, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't say I've eat, slept and, you know, bled SSEA, but uh, I definitely make the time and uh, I want to keep doing that even when I'm no longer in that chair role. Uh, so I just want other people, other heads at the table to uh, consider uh, what they are interested in doing in the future, because I am fairly certain that this will be the last year that I want to stay in that role, uh, given that uh, my future plans don't necessarily see me running for council again. It'd be nice to get somebody up to speed uh, and uh, with that same intention. And uh, Danielle's obviously made that expression of interest, but there, I, that doesn't mean that uh, others can't do the same. So I do appreciate the vote of confidence, and I'd be happy to stay on as uh, the chair for another year. Thank you. So uh, the results for election of chair for SSEA for 2024, Stefan Wilma, member from Tiny Township, is acclaimed as the SSEA chair for 2024. All right, um, we're going to move on to the vice chair. Uh, are there any nominations for SSEA Vice Chair from the floor? I'd like to nominate Danielle. <laughs> I'll ask a second time. Are there any nominations for SSEA Vice Chair from the floor? I'll ask a third time. Are there any nominations for SSEA Vice Chair from the floor? Excellent. Can I have a mover and seconder to close the nominations? <laughs> Danielle, are you willing to let your name stand for the position of vice chair for the SSEA? Yes. Excellent. Would you like to take two minutes as well? Uh, I'll take a second and just uh, <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. And I really want to take the next. I enjoyed doing it this first year, really trying to dig into what the SSE does and their core mandates and all the work they do. And um, I'll take the opportunity of this next year to learn as much as I can. From there staff. will be a lot of delegating. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it should be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Vice Chair Results, uh, Danielle Alexander, the member from Springwater, was acclaimed as the SSEA Vice Chair for 2024. Um, so, uh, we also need a motion, the resolution that the Severn Sound Environmental Joint Municipal Service Board has appointed for the year of 2024, executive offers as follows. Chair Stefan Walma, Vice Chair Danielle Alexander. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Sorry, Suzanne and Lauren. Uh, and uh, sorry, I didn't call for a vote on the rest, but I will call for the vote now. 
All in favor? Thank you. That was carried. So, Councillor Walma, you remain evening chair and our vice chair. Congratulations. Thank you. And I will now step down as chair and pass meeting back to our chair, Staff Walma. Thank you, Julie. And thank you, board members. We do have one last piece that uh, I noticed when we were going through that is not in here is the uh, usually the executive has a uh, past uh, chair on the executive committee that we would meet and bring recommendations forward. <coughs> Suzanne was appointed by this board to that role last year. Uh, is there anyone uh, that uh, is there anyone that wants to make any changes to that? Suzanne, do you wish to stay in as the executive officer? These are just general questions as we go through. I'd be happy to stay. Happy to stay. If there's support, yeah. Issues with that? Suzanne's been fantastic, so I'm super happy to have you back. Uh, with that, we'll make a, a quick motion that uh, Suzanne stay on as uh, an executive member. Uh, moved by Mark, seconded by Lori. All those in favor? That is carried. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a whole page for this. Uh, item six is our uh, Severance Sound Source Protection Authority meeting. We have none. Uh, seven is our fourth quarter report. 7.1 is SSEA fourth quarter report 2023. And I will pass this over to the agenda. Anything you want to highlight? Uh, it feels like a long time ago, the fourth quarter. <laughs> Uh, if there's any questions from the report, we're happy to take them. Once, twice, uh, and just uh, something that I've been doing at every meeting now, I pick when I go to, it always gets added to the consent agenda. And no one, sorry, very few counselors read all of the consent agenda items. Uh, so I always take a point of just pulling it out and highlighting one thing. So... Uh, I my council seems happy to to hear that, and if there's something you can do to just get SSEA back out in front of our councils and they go forward, I think it's important. So, uh, with that, moved by Brian, seconded by Danielle, that the SSEA Joint Municipal Service Board receives the fourth quarter uh, report for information. All those in favor? That is carried. Uh, can I, Mr. Chair, yep. just add, just as a reminder, those do go to your clerks to be shared with council uh, as well and staff. So once once we're done this meeting, they're a fair game for anybody who wants them. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, moving into our presentations. We have two scheduled ones today. Item 8.1 is a presentation on the update, update on status of the Elmville groundwater project. And we have uh, Dr. Powell with us this morning. Good morning, Dr. Powell, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, we, uh, we'll, we'll turn the floor over to you. Just want to remind you, I, I don't want it to sound rude. I'm just talking about the procedural part, is we, uh, we allot 10 minutes for these presentations. So if you could do your best, I know your passion for the project, uh, to keep uh, close to that timing, it would be much appreciated by the board. I will. I will endeavor to do that. Um, I I was of the opinion that I'd be sharing my screen and having my pointer available, which um, your your folks there have let me know. They'll show the slides, and I'll simply say next slide. So I hope this doesn't get too choppy, um, but I'll get right to it as soon as I set my timer. Um, first of all, is an apology from me to not only SSEA but all partners. Um, and I think you got the email that I sent out to confirmed partners at this time. Um, the poor communication that has happened over the last um, year and a half, two years, is completely on my head. Um, and um, I have no really good excuse, but I'll give you some anyway in the next slide. Oh, yeah, I got to say next slide, not just next slide. Thank you. Um, if you look here at this diagonal set of, of, of photos in the upper left to the lower right, I'm going to give you some idea of what's really been going on. And I think it bears mentioning that ever since Bill Shoddick realized these waters were um, special about three decades ago, um, he's never stopped working on them. And in the last three years, there's been a tremendous amount of activity. 
Um, in the upper left, uh, I want to mention publicity. We have had a lot of publicity, everything from TVO shows to the CBC to various yeah. articles in local papers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we've also given uh, town sort of town halls, and we did even this last summer, um, both for partners and for uh, the general public. So we've never stopped speaking with people about this. I just haven't been good about sending out emails related to that material. Um, some of our delays are our fault, and some are not. We've been having we've we've developed prototypes. Um, in the laboratories at the University of Alberta, developing these prototypes or producing, as you can see, the white well there going in and the white auger that's in the other picture for placement of lysimeters is not a simple process. This takes over a year of leaching and testing of these materials to make sure that they do not result in any type of contamination um, of the samples that we take. Um, these these plastics are made from the best material that you can get on the market. Um, there's then been the field and laboratory testing. We placed um, wells in the area in two spots in 2001, sampled them in 2002. We then placed lysimeters in four spots at the beginning of the summer of 2003. Um, the, then we sent, had three sample campaigns on those wells, um, and those those poor waters were collected, as you can see in the lower right, um, through 10 micron sized filters in the lysimeters at two different depths in four localities. Those liquids were then um, filtered through a 0.45 micron filter. That filter dew has been um, analyzed and so have the waters that came out. And those waters in the field were divided into four different aliquots uh, of also metal-free plastic materials based on um, what the analyses would be, cations, anions, isotopes, dissolved organic carbon, whatever it might be. Um, if you look up at the upper left of the graphs that you see there, um, I wanna tell you why this was important. Um, particle composition. There's been a lot of discussion in the area about whether or not there are sediments in the waters based on land use change and or what they might be. So I did quite a bit of scanning electron microscopy and energy dispersive spectrometry uh, here in London, Ontario. And we can now safely say that a large portion of the materials that you see being collected down in the lower right picture on the 0.4 micron um, um, size filters was submicron and almost in the nanometer range of uh, measurement. And you can see from the EDX values, those yellow squiggly lines associated with the SEM photos in the upper left, we know the composition of those now and it was quite, quite enlightening. We've also, and, and those particles will, will transport through pore spaces in soils. Um, the next slide down is the isotopes, and you can see that long line with some blue and yellow dots, et cetera, Ore Lake up in the upper right, the Ore Lake wells in the lower left. We had this isotopic work done because we were confused as to whether or not um, the waters that are flowing out of the wells and or that occur in Ore Lake are um, waters from maybe 15 to 20 kilometers east of the artesian flow areas? Are they fossil waters from when the glaciers receded 13 and a half to 16 and a half thousand years ago? Are they waters bubbling up through the Precambrian igneous rocks at the bottom of the big valley there, about 125 meters deep? That's what isotopic work tells you. We were not surprised to find out that, in fact, the ore wells are not Pleistocene in age, they are recent in age. Um, which shows that the uplands in that area, contrary to some popular belief, are in fact recharge areas for these um, artesian flows. We also wanted to know what the mineralogy of these sediments, these soils were. And so we did x-ray diffractometry. And as you can see in the lower right um, slide of squiggly lines, 
Um, we determine mineralogy on all of the soil samples taken at the two levels when we place the lysimeters. And what we found is not that unusual in that the vast majority of these minerals are in fact feldspars um, and feldspars make up between 60 and 90 percent of mineral matter in all soils globally. But what was, in, was exciting is that we have found that there are associations of, for example, appetite inclusions in the, um, in the minerals. These appetite inclusions, it's calcium phosphate, are very important because this is a source of energy for microbes. And microbes are extremely important in the evolution of groundwater and its geochemistry. We also found various minerals that host um, unusual trace elements. Um, this can be used to understand better the trace element geochemistry of the waters because we have to look at residence times and rock or mineral water reactions and reaction times. All of this is critical to understanding um, what the geochemical processes are that are producing this pristine water. And I am happy to say that, well, not happy to say, but I can frankly state that there is nobody at this time that understands those processes or the impact of um, land use change on them potentially. Next slide, please. Um, this is an old, I don't know how this slide got in here. It's an old slide. Um, NSERC has changed its mandates in, in the last couple of years. Option two of the NSERC Alliance Grant platform used to be the, the platform we would ask for money from. Um, it is now changed to NSERC Society. And in fact, now NSERC in this funding platform looks at the social implications, societal implications of natural science and engineering research as being more important or as important as the actual science itself. A lot of people are having a hard time understanding that. But the bottom line is societal impacts, connections that are made by partners, and the broader outcomes, meaning how does the life of this project um, get extended past the end of the project that only occurs through partnership involvement are very important. So we all know that COVID's over, that's good. Um, we were in a bit of a slump trying to raise 33% uh, of the total funds that we needed to run this project during COVID and all the other things that have happened. But now that platform has changed and NSERC will fund 100% of the grant application that we will submit. The most important aspect right now and the things that we need to develop, and it was part of the email that I sent out to everybody recently, is that we have to build the connections within and between partner organizations and identify indicators of potential change. That is to say, we need to look at the causal relationship between the objectives as outlined in all of the letters of intent that are, that are, are submitted by um, partners, in a two, it, it's a two-way street. What are the partners going to do for the project? What is the project going to do for the partners? And NSERC has changed. This is no longer just lip service. This really, really must be done. And it has to be done before the application goes in. And if you'll give me the next slide. Um, as of today, the budgets have been reduced from 7.2 to $5 million. Um, that was hard to do, but we were able to change activities with, with the knowledge that we would be able to meet the objectives um, that we originally sent out to do. Um, we had a long overdue science team meeting in uh, January, just a month ago. And at that time, we set a deadline of May 1st, 2024, for submitting this application to NSERC. I think this has been the number one question on everybody's lips for the last two years. When are you submitting the application? That deadline is now firm. The responsibilities from each of the universities, Guelph, Ottawa, and Alberta, the principal um, scientists in those universities have all agreed on their responsibilities and guaranteed that this application will go in end of April, but I'm saying May 1st. So that's where we are right now. 
Um, and gosh, I have a whole minute left, but I think I've said enough. Um, I would love to have um, any kind of questions you might have. Thank you very much, Dr. Powell. Appreciate the update. Uh, I'll open it up to the board for questions, comments. I will I will start then. Uh, a lot of the municipalities around this table, including the SSEA board, did send uh, letters of support for the NSERT grant in the past. Uh, do you require an updated letter of support? Is that what, is, is there a, a specific ask or is there an update today? No, this this was um, because you guys asked for an update of what's been going on and because it seems like and has been a long time since you submitted that letter of intent. Um, as I mentioned in the group email I sent, I guess it was about a week ago now, I will be contacting all of the partners who have submitted a letter of intent so that we can now start working on identifying the verifiable indicators of change that will occur as the result of the natural science engineering research that has been done. This is the number one priority of NSERC. And as I pointed out in that email, um, without the partner organizations and without, without a firm um, group of partners, um, we wouldn't be able to submit this application. It, 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 this is a serious, serious issue. But the letter of intent as submitted by uh, SSEA or any partner that has submitted an LOI at this time is perfectly fine. We just now have to unpack the objectives into indicators that will be able to measure quantifiably if we are reaching those objectives during the life of the project. And so to clarify that, you're gonna require uh, a couple hours with uh, a representative from each of those organizations to unpack that, is that? Uh... Correct, correct. That's exactly what will happen. And um, we will need, an, as the letters of intent all show in their in-kind budgets, we will require um, close communication and help and collaboration throughout the life of the project. We want, in this case, SSEA, not simply to wait for us to send an update about what data has been collected every three months or six months. We want to know from SSEA how we can make this a better project to fit into the mandates and the mission of SSEA or any partner. Um, so it's really a serious two-way street as far as project uh, development and implementation. Um, that's the goal. Okay. Um, my last question is, I know that I received this, but I think I received the email as the chair of the SSEA. Uh, did everyone in the part of the, our board members get the same email? Uh, so staff. only staff. So what we'll do is because we're trying to make things happen, we'll get everybody uh, a copy of the uh, the request, uh, and we'll make sure that uh, you guys forward it on to the appropriate staffs within your organization. As a reminder, because it sounds like Dr. Powell has already sent mm -hmm. these emails to all of our uh, municipalities. Yes, have, you it's a, response, have you received response from uh, some or all uh, as of I, yet? Some um, uh, there. I, you got to. I, I haven't pointed this out, but a lot of the partners um, I've had recent communications with, deputations with, face to face meetings with, uh, virtual meetings with oh, in the last month or two or three. So th they've been contacted. It's it's folks like you guys that came on board very early. Uh, that are probably feeling a bit left out. And again, for that, I apologize. Um, but to have a specific person within SSEA and probably two or three others that are partially committed as contacts that I can work with in the next uh, certainly six or eight weeks, um, virtually, probably, unless I can come up there again, to develop these indicators is, is very important. And they're your, they're your link to the project. They're your lifeline to the project. So the, uh, this is just a suggestion too, and uh, it was Julie's idea, but uh, maybe we'll, uh, uh, from an SSEA standpoint, try and coordinate a singular meeting uh, of our partners, uh, SSEA and yourselves, to get that uh, to get that update, uh, so that uh, you you're not having to duplicate this over and over uh, again. 
Uh, and I also believe that our partner municipalities will expect uh, SSCA to be there as our environmental organization from a expertise uh, standpoint as well. That would that would be great. Um, we we've had people mention people whose umbrella you are, more or less. That um, why should they be um, worry about being partnering as long as SSEA is there to represent them? And I've tried to point out that SSEA has a mission and 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 an agenda for what they do but that each one of your uh, members also will have specific things that they're interested in. And that has come out in the, in the LOIs. So I'm right now putting together a matrix of all partners and their objectives going each way, what they want to learn from the project or get from the project and what they're going to give to the project. I'm putting a matrix together. From that, we will group people. So having one-on-one -on -one meetings with SSEA and having this group meeting you're talking about is great. Because one of the the connections part and the broader broader outcomes to society are all about what we do with the results and how they translate into a Canada's ability to manage and understand natural resources. So that's a great idea. Okay. Well, we uh, appreciate your time here today. Thank you very much, Dr. Powell. We will have. Uh... Uh, Julie will be the one that's uh, the point of contact to start, and we'll figure out who our SSEA staff expert for the uh, the project will be going forward, and we'll relay that, relay that information to you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you, and now that we've had this, um, um, I was planning on contacting Julie as one of the first people. Um, so uh, if we can get going on the verifiable indicators, Julie, as soon as you have time, that'd be great. Just let me know. Thank you. Okay. Once, twice. Uh, moved by Lori, seconded by Suzanne, that the presentation read the update on the Elmdale Groundwater Project and CERC Alliance Grant Platform Funding <laughs> and received for information. All those in favor? Thank you very much, Dr. Paul. Thank Thanks very much for having me. And again, sorry for the long silence. And I look forward to the next couple of months and what and the mutual benefit that we will achieve from our collaboration. Thank you. Take care. Uh, okay, moving on to item 8.2, we have uh, our auditor report. Uh, so we have, I'm sorry, I don't have the name written down. What's our auditor's name? <laughs> Rebecca McDonald joining us this morning. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning. <laughs> morning, Rebecca. I will, uh, I will turn the phone <laughs> right away. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen here. So I'm gonna start with our independent auditor's report. It's on page three, if anybody has a printed copy. So we've audited the financial statements of Severn Sound Environmental Association, which comprise the statement of financial position as at December 31st, 2022. The statement of operations, the change in its net financial assets and cash flows for the year then ended, as well as notes to the financial statements. So in our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of Severn Sound Environmental Association as at December 31st, 2022, results of its operations and cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. So it was a clean audit opinion. There was nothing that came to our attention that would make us believe that these statements are materially misstated. So we conduct our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these statements. And those charged with governance are responsible for overseeing the association's financial reporting process. So our objective for all of this is to obtain reasonable assurance about whether these financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and then to issue this audit report that includes our opinion. So as part of the audit, we identify and assess the risks of the material misstatement to the financial statements. We obtain an understanding of internal control that's relevant to the audit. We evaluate the appropriateness of the accounting policies used and the reasonableness of the accounting estimates. 
We conclude on the appropriateness of management's use of the going concern basis of accounting, and we evaluate the overall presentation, structure, and content of these financial statements, including all the related disclosures. So that's our audit report. So getting into, this is your statement of financial position, otherwise known as your balance sheet. So kind of some of the biggest changes from last, or from 2021, shouldn't say last year. The accounts receivable at December 31st, 2022 is about 102,000. In there is about 13,000 from Lake Simcoe Region Conservation. There was 46,000 due from participating municipalities. And then there was a $35,000 federal grant included in there as well. Uh, the due from related parties is about 832,000. Just gonna flip to note two for a second. So the amount due from related parties. So in this note here, we have the association received just over a million dollars from municipal contributions from these participating municipalities. The treasurer municipality, so the township of Tay, collects receivables and remits payments to vendors on behalf of SSEA. As such, the balance due from related parties was about 832,000. And it represents the remaining operating funds held by Tay. And then in this note as well, we have the amounts due to and from the related parties. So included in AR is $46,000. And then there's about 24,000 included in accounts payable. So back to your balance sheet, we have mm -hmm. the accounts payable and accrued liabilities of 118,000. Uh, as I just mentioned, there was 24,000 due to participating municipalities, and then there's about 47,000 in there of payroll and vacation accrual just because of the timing of the payroll. Deferred revenue is $94,905. So note three is your deferred revenue. So this just shows the continuity <laughs> of the balance at the beginning of the year, the contributions that were received, and the amounts taken into revenue, and then it shows your balance end of year by fund there. So the next item on there is your employee future benefits. So note four. So this amount has decreased because there was a new actual actuarial valuation done in October 2023. So there's no longer any sick leave entitlement that's included in there. So as you can see from 2021 to 2022, the only thing that's left in there is the 67,500 of the health and dental benefit liability. The next item on your balance sheet is your long-term debt, which was paid off in 2022. Your tangible capital assets of 213,000. is note six. So during the year, there was $3,600 of additions to capital assets and there was amortization of $18,652. So we normally like to see additions close to your amortization, which means that the assets are being replaced as they're being used or amortized. And then the last item on your statement of financial position is your accumulated surplus. And this is note seven that shows the composition of your surplus. So there's 213,000 invested in tangible capital assets, 409,000 currently in reserves, an unrestricted surplus of 314, and then amounts to be recovered in future years of 67.5, which is your employee future benefits. This is your income statement. So total revenue for 2022 was just over 1.3 million. There was an increase of $117,000 over budget. And that was because the Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority, the federal grants and the interests were not budgeted. And then total expenses of 1.1. One. There was a $103,000 under budget and 102,000 of that is uh, salaries, wages, and benefits. So that leaves you with an annual surplus of $157,022, $152, 
When you add that to your surplus beginning of year, you have an ending accumulated surplus of $870,099. And then these other two schedules here are just showing your changes in your net financial assets, just your acquisitions and your amortizations of your assets. And then your statement of cash flows just shows the changes in cash for the year. So there is actually $2 left in a bank account. <laughs> and then pages seven to nine are your policies. So as part of the audit, we review these for relevance and consistency. <laughs> And there was no change from 2021 to 2022. There is a couple other notes that I haven't touched on. They just provide a little bit more detail in case you want to look at those. Is there any questions? Uh, thank you very much, Rebecca. Questions, comments? Uh, Paul. Thank you. Through the chair, I've been asked to... Uh, inquire about the debt repayment to Tony Township for 9,334. It's listed as long-term debt, but there's no explanation in the report on how long this is for or when it's paid off. Is there any indication or knowledge? Uh, we can get Judy to answer that question. Like, Thank you, Mr. Chair. That was for the van that we purchased. It was a three year long. So anything longer than a year is considered long-term. Okay. And it fine. ended in 22. It ended in 20. the last payment was 22. Okay, thank you. That was it. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Uh, the only one that I have, and this is not a reflection of, uh, of, of your services, I'm more just curious, is uh, when, when do we generally, or organizations generally get their audited financial statements for previous years? And I, and I say organizations, I'm going to stick to the municipalities uh, in general. We have them generally go out anywhere between April and the odd one drags into October, but that's rare. Um, we have been working so with- this is very uh, rare? It's, it's one of the later ones, yep. <laughs> um, and just out of, and, and why would the, the delay be uh, this long for us? It's because of how it's intertwined with Tay. So we had to do it alongside the audit of Tay because once they adjust their ledgers, it also adjusted seven zones. Can I follow up to that? Yeah. So Tay Township is just releasing their 2022 audited financials as well in 2023, or is it just because theirs had to be done then SSCAs was done? Because this is January of 2024. So like Mm -hmm. This is concerning that we're like a whole year before we're getting audited financials. Well, the only thing I can add to that is that uh, we've been without a treasurer uh, on and off for a better part of a year. And I think that could be a possible cause for the delay in getting all the financials done up to date. So that's all I can say to it. <laughs> Right. I would also say that in our Medante, we're behind as well because we had uh, issues with the treasurer turnover combined with COVID. We're, we're pushing now to get it back on track, but it's, I'm not going to say it's acceptable, but I think there's been some mitigating circumstances perhaps for a couple of municipalities where there's been quite a delay in their financials. I think it's it's an industry thing, but I got, like this is a significant delay. This is not this is not standard by any means. I'm in public sector. I have an accountability that I have to have audits done by the 30th of June because I'm funded through the ministry. So I, I just think it's really challenging. And we're looking at these, and we're now going to wrap up Q4 of 2023. And it's really hard to sometimes look at how these factors, do they even have any impact now in 2023 mm -hmm. or, and 100%. as we move forward from, from that mm -hmm. perspective. So. 100%. And I respect that from an HR perspective, everyone's struggling to keep positions filled and have all of those pieces. And we know that, uh, you know, I just lost our auditor. So I, I, I feel the pain and, you know, those are a lot, there's a lot of things that come, but it's just really hard to get reports that are a, a full year behind. Yeah. No reflection of you at all, Rebecca. That was not, it was just in general in terms well, of. I completely understand. 
Yeah. Were, were there any other questions for Rebecca? <laughs> Sorry, I started that. My apologies. All right, uh, seeing none, uh, we have a motion moved by Danielle, seconded by Mark. That staff report 4923 SSEA regarding the 2023 draft audited financial statements be approved by the board. The presentation. So presentation, my apologies. Sorry. Be received for information. Uh, all those in favor? That is carried. Uh, now we move into our financial report. Thank you very much for your time, Rebecca. We appreciate it. Thank You're you. going to stay for the next one? Yeah, and the next few. The next few? Beautiful. Um, we'll move on to our 9.1, which is the 2022 draft audited financials. Judy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this report is just now your, um, for, the, for the board to approve financial statements. So you received... The presentation and now we're just asking for um those financial statements to be approved okay moved by suzanne seconded by Lori. what i said before all in favor sure. uh that was to approve uh the draft on the financials uh 9.2 transfer of 2022 unrestricted surplus to reserve uh this will be for discussion judy thank you mr chair um note seven that rebecca showed shows our accumulated surplus and the difference between the accumulated unrestricted surplus from 21 to 22 is the amount that we're requesting be transferred to um, the contingency reserve as per our, our, our um, SSCA reserve policy. <coughs> the surplus funds at the end of the year will be contributed to this reserve. So we're asking for the board to receive this information and approve the transfer of same. $96,842. Surplus? Unrestricted surplus. Uh, questions? Comments? I see two. I saw, okay, all pointed at you. Susan? Where does, so again, we're talking about 2022 funds. Where does that 96000 sit in 2023? And how do we handle that, those unrestricted dollars? Mm -hmm. Um, through the chair, that would go into our reserve fund, and it would, or not funds, sorry, reserve account, and that would be available, um, you know, as our reserves are in cases of un extraordinary expenses, unexpected or unpredicted events, or as the board chooses to spend. And deficits, if we found ourselves in that particular instance Correct. over a year. So can I just follow up with that? Follow up. Sorry, not to um, On that same vein. So in 2023, if we found ourselves in a position that we needed to tap into it, although we hadn't approved it formally, would that come to the board or to the executive to say, we'd be looking for approval to do this? Right, it would be a motion of the board. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Paul, then Lauren. Okay, <clears throat> then Mark. Then Mark. Um, yeah, so when everything's talking about reserves, a lot of people, a lot of questions start popping up. Um, from our perspective, I'm just curious if uh, the transfer is approved today, uh, and then we have the new business item. Um, it, there is a potential, like it's not locked in stone, if a request was made after that discussion to refund the municipal portions and approved, uh, the municipal share of those could be refunded, or is it going to be? Uh, I mean, theoretically, if the board were to uh, make it agree with a motion to have their uh, a reserve refunded, then I believe that that absolutely could happen. We've done it in the past with other ones, uh, specific to source water protection. Uh, so as far as locking it in, we we put it in reserves. Reserves are to be used by the board at the board's discretion. So it's okay. I, it's not a it's not unlockable. I guess is the right response. Right. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Lori. Yes, through you, Chair. My question would be with reserves. Uh, is Has there been or is there any thought as to how these reserves are held? In other words, is there some opportunity for um, some investment in some type of interest-bearing invest, uh, investment that does provide liquidity, but also some return to the association? It's a great question. Considering Tay holds our reserves for us, I have no idea. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to defer to Rebecca McDonald. Did you catch the question, Rebecca? About the cash and reserves, yeah. 
Um, okay. So these, that may be a question for Tay. Cause like you say, Tay holds those funds and it's a net amount of everything that's on your balance sheet, which they hold. So there may be some things earmarked for payables and then there's some receivables that are coming in. Um, so that might be a discussion for Tay. So I, can we add that for a, a follow-up with the treasurer to find out if we're accumulating any interest on the reserves in the SSEA? And if we find out that answer, we can also start talking about <clears throat> other investment yeah. opportunities. Yeah, excellent, thank you. Clark. Yeah, I have a question through to Judy or Rebecca. So how, how does it work to get back to the municipalities? How does the reserve works? And how would, say, Sovereign ever use the reserve why is it individually there and how how would we use it in the future? Is there, can you give me an example? Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, through the chair, sorry. Um, we have an example of that in the past. Tay has used one year of the Drinking Water Source Protection mm -hmm. Reserve to decrease their budget amount, um, like the invoice for the year for the core services. So that can be done at any time. Those funds are in you know the Township Severance name and, and each of the members. So. Yeah, it's a request, a resolution of your council. Okay. So how does it, get, so there's a formula uh, based on a percentage on population. And so that's how the <laughs> surplus gets giddy back up. Okay. So the, the recommendation right now would be this to go to a general reserve. So if to Paul's point, there was a request for it, we'd have to figure out exactly how much the A would be entitled out of that portion or mm -hmm. whatever municipality. And Again, that's not our current policy, so there, there could be some significant discussion around. Thank you. Suzanne? Through you, Chair, uh, just as a follow-up to that, when the, we say that these reserves are, um, sorry, I can't the term that we just used, unrestricted, excuse me, unrestricted fund, we talk about reserves for each municipality for core funding under the source water protection, would we then have to look at that 96,000 to see what goes into that versus, because an unrestricted fund is pretty wide. Those are different fund types that come in. So just how would that, uh, that's just the general question on those unrestricted funds. Um, through the chair, I think you'll see it clearly when we get to the report on the reserve schedules. Okay. It's, it's laid out there for you. So I could go there now if you like. Or... I'm happy to wait, but I, it, okay. it, it'll be It'll be clear then. Okay, thank you. Chair Brian has Oh, sorry, Brian, forgot you're here. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks for recognizing me. And just a quick question in these reserve funds, I know in my personal corporations that the banks only uh, insure or cover uh, a certain amount. I think in, in my case, it's up to $100,000. Um, and then what we do is we um, invest in GICs or something like that where there's some more strength and, and, and security. I'm just wondering if we're in that position where we would consider doing that or if, or is it of any importance to us at all? And I think uh, probably Rebecca would be uh, more suited. As part of this, why don't, uh, given that both yourself and Lori have, uh, have brought this up, why don't we make a, a formal motion? So we'll, uh, we'll receive this uh, piece's information. Um, Sorry, we won't receive. We'll we'll give direction as to what we want to do with the reserves, and then we could maybe get uh, yourself and Lori to move a motion to have staff investigate investment opportunities for our reserve fund. Does that make sense to both of you? Yeah, I think I think that would be very suitable. I just um just for the protection of these reserves, and and also to have the accessibility to them when we need them. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great topic to to bring forward. Uh, so we'll do the we'll break those up into two. So first, moved by Mark, seconded by Suzanne, uh, that uh, staff report number fifty twenty three regarding SSEA twenty twenty two unrestricted surplus be received as information, and the unrestricted amount be transferred to our general reserve fund. All those in favor? That is carried. Was there any other motions from the floor on this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't know how to word it. Just that myself and Brian will look into opportunities for uh, 
investment and security of the investments through a Schedule A bank. So you guys don't have to do it. We're just going to get a staff, okay. staff to yeah. do the reporting. Yeah. So moved by Lori, seconded by Brian, that mm -hmm. staff report back on investment okay. opportunities for reserve funds. You good with that? Yeah. All those yep. in favor? That is carried. Sorry, who moved and seconded that one? Lori and Brian. Oh, there was a further part. I just missed the. Uh, so I, I wasn't as uh, specific as I should have been. Sorry. Uh, when it, it's ninety six thousand eight hundred forty two to the contingency reserve for future needs. Previous. Uh, Move us on to nine point three staff report fifty one twenty three deferral of twenty twenty three unspent reserve. Judy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The board will recall um, in twenty twenty two. Well. My here in 2022, the board at the time decided that, um, well, we, we went through the pay equity consultant uh, compensation review and we didn't spend all the money because part of that uh, was to improve and get our employee manual up to date and so on. So we deferred that to 2023, but we still haven't done that work. And we would like to defer that further again to 2024, $9,799. There's three um, items that we are requesting deferral on in this report. The second one is the strategic plan. We um, we budgeted fifteen thousand. We've only spent seven of it, but the balance is only going to be three thousand. So we'd like to defer that to twenty twenty four, while um, the consultant can finishes the strategic plan renewal document. And the third one is. Um, the board will recall we requested funds from reserve to cover the additional IT costs when we transitioned from the Tay Township to the County of Simcoe in 2023. A lot of that work is going to be cost or billed in 2024. So we will not be using the 16055 in 2023 um, as planned, but we would like to request the board that that be transferred to 2024 when the costs will be incurred. And instead of $1,800 over budget in 2022, three, what year are we in? 20, in the 2023 financials, as I've said here that we're approximately over budget 1,800, it's more like about 1,200. We're willing to absorb that in 2023 and request that the money from reserve come in 2024 when those costs are incurred. So it's a total of 28,907, we'd like to defer to 24. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing none. Um, okay, cool. Uh, moved by Danielle, seconded by Brian. Staff report <clears throat> 5223, sorry, 5123 regarding the deferral of reserve funds designated in the 2023 budget to cover consulting services be received as information. And further, that said funds not spent be deferred to 2024. All those in favor? Ms. Carey. Well, then, if this is beautiful, Mr. Chair, mm. it's not all consulting services. One is like the IT. Consulting services yes. and yes. IT. Thank you. Be received as information and said funds not be spent. By Was there any uh, issues with the amendment to the motion? Looking yes. around? No. What did you ask? Sorry. Sorry, can we confirm um, motion 83A? Just want to make sure I have the word right. And IT. Do we vote on that? Yes, yes. We did. Yes. Yeah, we're good. And it's morning. Yeah. Yes. We'll get long night. It's morning. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Same I need a coffee. Same thing. Unless you're just getting off nights. Uh, all right, moving to item 9.4, staff report 5223, SSCA re reserve schedule as of December 31st, 2023, and projected reserve schedule as of December 31st, 
Judy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is where you can see the detail that's in the reserves. Um, specifically to address Suzanne's previous question, um, if you look at the 2023 contingency reserve, which is the first one, you will see the three years there of drinking water source protection that belongs to each municipality as listed. And then the other funds that are related. Now, um, we just talked about 2022 unrestricted reserve. I've added that to the bottom pending council approval. Mm -hmm. And then um, the 2023 reserve will reflect the contributions to reserve um, and the use of reserves by board motion. You know, we did for the pay equity and for the staff grid, partial cost of the strategic plan and the flow meter purchase. You will recall we had a motion through during the year. <clears throat> and then the 24 draft projected reserve schedule. I've shown the pending amounts we just talked about, those three amounts that was from the consultants and the IT, bringing them back or bringing them forward into 2024. And, um, and that's it in a nutshell. Okay, so that answer high level any of those questions? Yes, there? thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay. Um, we will uh, we'll address some of those comments at the end, but just uh, just so to highlight, both Tay Township and Oromadante have used one year of those reserve funds that they have under source water protection, but there's still two years that you have available to you as well. <laughs> um, moved by oh, no, 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 no. Uh, moved by Mark, seconded by Danielle. The staff report number 5223 SSCA regarding the 2023 SSCA reserve schedule and the projected 2024 reserve schedule schedule be received for information and further that the 2023 reserve schedule and 2024 projected reserve schedule be approved by the board. All those in favor? That's carried. Staff report uh, 5323. This is 95 appointment of our auditors for 2023. Um, Judy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as um, the service board that we are, we use the audit firm that the Treasurer Municipality uses currently, Township of Tay. Tay will be appointing Pahat Film Associates for this year, and in the spring, they're planning to go to RFP for the five years following. So based on the fact that we are going, well, that Tay is going to go with Pahapal, I, um, that's what this is approving them for 2023. <laughs> and um, the cost this year will be 3,500. I'd just like to mention that Pahapal and Re Rebecca McDonald specifically has been really an awesome auditor. I dealt with a whole lot of auditors over my life and Rebecca's very efficient and always available. And um, the fee has been, the same $3,000 the whole time that I've been here. So they've quoted $3,500. I think it's it's a good deal. So that's it. Any questions or comments? Once, twice. Uh, appointment of auditors for 2023, motion 2387, moved by Lori, seconded by Paul. That SSCA appoints the audit firm for the SSCA Treasurer Municipality Township of Tay, currently Pahapal and Associates Professional Corporation, to perform the 2023 annual fiscal audit of the SSCA. All those in favor? That is carried. I, I do have uh, an item germane to uh, the motion, uh, and I would like to discuss, but given that I'm going to be bringing an idea for it, I'd like to relinquish the chair. Do you mind taking over, please? Sure. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Through the chair, uh, this actually came up in our uh, executive member, executive committee uh, discussions, uh, seeing that we've had uh, for the last few years uh, delays in our audited financial statements. Uh, we have recently had an increase in our uh, fees uh, from our treasurer municipality. As an organization, I think it's a good idea for us to go out and do some shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of continuing on with the same uh, process. So with the board's indulgence, I'd actually like to direct uh, the executive and staff uh, to uh, do some, uh, so we're, well, exactly that, shopping with our member municipalities, find out if anyone is 
interested, maybe get some costings associated with those. Um, obviously, if Tays had issues with treasurers and Orma Dante's had issues with treasurers, and I think Midland's been in the same boat, uh, well, it might be might be easier for everybody. We are a partnership, and it could be uh, could be beneficial to uh, our partner municipalities as well as the organization going forward. But uh, I'd like the board's blessing before we go ahead and do something like that. Oh, question. Oh, sorry. Um, Danielle's the chair. Okay. <laughs> through, through the chair, um, is this not something we should make it just a little bit more formal than uh, informal inquiries to the municipalities? You want to do? Yeah. I'm just wondering if it would not be a good idea to do it from a formal perspective. That way, whatever the end result is, it's all transparent and documented, and we just move in whatever direction we end up in. Because informally, you don't get as much response or as quick a response by some municipalities. Uh, yeah. But if you do it a formal request <clears throat> as a part of a formal proposal or a request, um, it's incumbent on the municipalities to respond. So I just think maybe it would be a good idea to formalize this process. Yes, through the chair. Um, may I respectfully request that the um, the Inquiry does not go to Oral Medante, only in that I know that there's staffing changes and more staffing changes coming, and I'm not sure that they would be able to accommodate the request. Yes. Oh, sorry, Brian. Yeah, as well, um, Township of Georgian Bay is currently without a uh, treasurer or director of finance. We're actually uh, borrowing uh, some help from Penetanguishing, so we're <laughs> We're in the process of of, uh, of looking to hire, and so I don't think we'd be much use at this time. Uh, just thought I'd give you that information. So, the one question I would have, I think it's important that all members, all, all of us who uh, are comprised under the SSEA, at least be aware that we're going out. So it may not be to ask, but it should be a general ask. And if you choose not to respond, I think that's appropriate. But I don't think it's incumbent upon us to just pick and choose if we should nominate our, or should say, don't include us. I think, right. it, Fair enough. Yeah. you know, the right is we're not in a position we can't support. And we would all respect that. I think mm -hmm. it's just for transparency and yeah. just ensuring that. I think that's good. Good point. We're clear. Um, uh, you know, we don't want to get anyone's nose at a joint that we weren't asked because of the positions that we're in, but we all understand from a, mm -hmm. from that perspective, I think, but it's important that we do that. Um, in terms of a formal motion, I think I, that's, Stefan, what you're proposing that is brought forward. Um, I also don't want to see us left without any financial support from Tay. So I hope this isn't seen as we're giving notice, but I think it is important that we look at ensuring that there is feasibility from a financial support perspective. This has always been a model that uh, we are in a good position. And if there's an opportunity, just, you know, it, it, it's hard right now for all of us to keep positions filled in, in that perspective. Um, but I'm just hoping it doesn't, it's the intention isn't that we now are scrambling possibly in that. I just want to be clear that. Judy can do it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From that perspective. Thank you, Sue. Sure. Uh, further to that, I just want to, I'm thinking that just from a reply perspective, if we address the request directly to the CAOs, because that's the one thing all the municipalities have is the CAO. And if they're not in a position to to help us out in that situation, mm -hmm. we just ask them to respond back. That will close that book on, on that municipality. So I just want to say, uh, Given the discussion, I'm 100% fine with a, a more formalized approach where okay. we send it out to everybody. So I, I'm happy to uh, amend my recommendation if uh, everyone else is on the same page. Sure. All right. Do we have a second? Then, any other questions, comments? Ryan, oh, all right. All those in favor? All right. And I will pass the chair back. Thank you. Do you have a question? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I if I could just I I just like to say on record. So first of all, Tay has not indicated they don't want to continue the service. So um, I appreciate what you raised, Suzanne. So it's it's we have not been asked to leave or to to figure that out. So um, what I really appreciate because we were in a position in the past where we were scrambling 
that this would hopefully put us in a position where if something changed to Tay, and for instance, you were in a position where you couldn't do the service, we weren't given two months notice to quickly hurry up and find another way. So, right. but I just want to meant like make it clear that we have not, nobody's asked us to go looking for a particular reason other than to just see what your interest is. So it's always good to show. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're out of question? Yes. Yeah. Chair? I guess so. We, we can, I don't know. Uh, Daniel, you're going to be the chair again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. I've got it. Yeah, so we, we, I think we have the general intent. Okay. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll write that down in a or yeah. we'll revisit it before the end of the meeting. Um, thank you very much for indulging me. I appreciate that. Uh, moving on to 9.6, which is staff report 5423 SSEA, the fourth quarter draft financials. Judy. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Rebecca. She can. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Sorry, I wasn't sure. Um, 2023 fourth quarter draft financials shows that we are trending favorably, but I caution that um, this is an early draft for the year end. So there are a lot of items that haven't happened yet. There are still expenses in the process of being paid and there are um, our assets need to be capitalized, prepaid expenses, et cetera. So it's a very draft document, but it looks very good. I also have attached a variance report, which shows where the variances are. Of, of significant note is the um, external revenues we managed, our staff managed to secure in 2023, $266,000 over budget revenue, which is really great. So we had the GLAF project, the um, 2BT, which is the big one. Uh, we had the Farland Lake study, which is a bit smaller, and we had deferred revenues from 2022 for some of those projects that uh, it was appropriate to move into 2023 to, to be spending. So I will leave it at that. It is, again, fairly preliminary. If uh, between now and the next board meeting, since they're so spaced out, if we notice something horrendous, you would let us know. Yes, I could actually bring this forward to the next meeting. Um, it'll be closer to finalized by then. Sure. Okay. Great. Questions, comments? Seeing none, moved by Danielle, seconded by Paul. Uh, staff report number 5423, SSEA, regarding the 2023 fourth quarter draft. <laughs> you received his information. All those in favor? That is carried. Uh, item 9.7, staff report 5523 SSCA, uh, SSCA 2024 staff COLA salary increase. Uh, there is a recommendation on board based on previous policy recommendations. I open it to the floor. Mark? I move it. Okay. So we'll read the motion and we can have some more discussion here. So moved by Mark. Staff report uh, 50, 5523 SSEA regarding a 2024 annual COLA salary increase of 2% based on the 2024 budget be approved by the board and further that the executive director be authorized to implement this cost of living increase for SSEA FEE staff effective January 1, 2024. Uh, seconder, please. Danielle, all those in favor? That is carried. Oh, was there any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I just would like to say that I very much appreciate the five-year overview in historical and the fact that you go to our neighboring municipalities. They're all members within this board. I think that's really important information from a, I'm an HR person. So when you look at compensation, it's really important to see that we're in line with what's going on in our municipalities and, and from that perspective. So I just want to say, um, I just appreciate the, the report. It makes making decisions easy in terms of how we move forward with decisions. So thank you for that. For that, I just want to highlight that. Lori. Sorry, and I have a question to the chair. Just with regard to the chart that we're looking at, um, the, is this the COLA adjustment for the municipality itself that it's set and agreed on? So I'm looking at our Medante of 2.75. Would that be the COLA adjustment for all municipal employees in Formadante, or is this specific to SSEA? 
No, that, so the, that one there is based on what uh, we have from the budgets in each of the municipalities. Okay. So Ormadante did 2.75% for right. employees. So, okay, thank you. Um, a good thing to highlight too, um, and just because one of the alternatives, I guess, to having the association we have is the conservation authorities. And I know that uh, Ormadante and Springwater get to uh, mm -hmm. experience that. Uh, NBCA had a 5.9% increase for COLA for their staff this year. I would love to give that to our staff, but we have a bunch of constraints. And the uh, uh, as a note, when we did our comparators, uh, so we just, uh, 2021, we, we did our, our uh, com compensation review, NBCA uh, and Lake Simcoe Region were obviously comparators uh, to the SSCA, and they were already significantly higher uh, paid than uh, our staff are here too. So uh, just just an indicator that, uh, in my opinion, that we are being responsible in how we are managing our staff uh, and uh, how they're compensated. Again, wish they could be paid more. They're not even paying attention. So. No, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> this is being recorded. So. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, thank you for that discussion. And we will move on to SSCA corporate administration updates. So 10.1 is staff reporting. What did I do? I'm just I Another, okay. we maybe have a five minute bio break. Oh yeah, sure. Please. <laughs> did, 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 did. Yeah. Moved by Suzanne, seconded by Lori. The meeting <laughs> recess is for ten minutes. We'll be back at ten thirty in front. Thank you. Moved by Lori, seconded by Danielle. The meeting reconvenes. The time is exactly thirteen minutes. What I said we would be, Brian. Uh, ten thirty-five. All those in favor? That's scary. Um, just uh, an FYI, Julie has to leave at eleven fifteen uh, to go and do a deputation uh, for Midlands budget. That's for why Roberta is not joining us today. Uh, given the the circumstances surrounding it, we've asked uh, Mark is going to go with her as uh, support. Just. Uh, Back up as required. I have so it in my calendar as well. That will probably we'll probably be going beyond okay. that time. If we're out of here, I will uh, I will be heading that way after the fact as well. Okay. But we'll mark in the minutes that uh, Mark is performing a SSCA function and therefore had to leave the meeting. Uh, we are on ten point one. Staff Report 5623, this is the SSCA board meeting schedule. Uh, basically, I'll just read them. Our first quarter meeting, April 25th, second quarter, uh, July 25th. Um, third quarter is October 24th, and the fourth quarter meeting, Jan 30th of 2025. Are there any uh, issues, complaints, concerns, questions? Questions? Thank you to the chair. I've been asked to request that uh, uh, calendar invites be sent out so the councillors can just click and add to their calendars. Oh, I see. Actually, you know what's funny? I've never asked for it, but I do love them. I am the worst organized person as far as these things go. It's just I, easier to click. I need I, someone to I manage. my calendar as well. <laughs> can, we, uh, can we manage that? Mm -hmm. Calendar invites to the board. Uh, there is a very good potential, and just uh, not, to, and we don't need to change it because uh, we are a board and a team. Uh, that July twenty fifth, I will not be available. It's my daughter's birthday, and I'm on holidays, so that's why we have Danielle. <laughs> um, okay. Um, seeing no other hands, moved by Paul, seconded by Mark. That staff report number 5623 SSEA regarding the 2024 SSEA board schedule will be received for information. And further that, the Joint Municipal Board of Directors approves the following schedule of SSEA Board of Directors meeting for 2024. Meetings will be held from 9.30 a.m. to 12 noon at a location to be determined. Uh, for, as I said, the 25th of April, 25th of July, 24th of October, and the 30th of January. Chair. All those in favor? That is carried. 10.2 staff report 5723 SSCA. Uh, this is the Southern Sound Source Protection Authority Drinking Water Source Protection Update and SSCA Risk Management Services 2023 Q4 update. And we have 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, your pretty standard update. Uh, three quick highlights to point out. Uh, so, fourth quarter of 2024, very heavy on uh, water system changes. So, this soon to be will be municipal system in Springwater with Castle Drive, uh, Fourth Street, and Binden and Midland uh, to work with an tank machine. So, it's, it's not only time soon, but uh, coming out of the Payette uh, of EA. Uh, a big news from the province. So they released a funding uh, call for proposals for a three-year funding window for source protection authority work. So uh, that did um, roll over into Q1 of 2024, but we did submit a three-year work plan and budget request. Um, that is in with the province now, and there's been no comments yet. So uh, more to come. Typically there's negotiations and they say yay or nay to what we uh, put in for, but that is with the province for a three-year funding window this time. So first time it's ever been three years. Great news there. Uh, on the risk management official side of things, so pretty heavy quarter with uh, development applications and inquiries uh, and signed three more risk management plans. So working away, there's 14 left. Uh, July 1st, 2024 deadline is, is solid deadline. Uh, so yeah, working towards that. Appreciate the update. Questions or comments? Uh, I did want to add that uh, uh, we have reached out to Minister Kanjan. Uh, we've had some initial talks and we're looking at setting up uh, just a meet and greet, shall we say, uh, meeting with uh, our executive committee and uh, the ministry just to introduce ourselves, what we do, and uh, formulate those relationships so that we are successful in these three-year contracts for money. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, given that, so by Mark, seconded by Paul, that staff report number 5722 SSCA regarding an update on the activities undertaken by SS, SBA, and SSCA risk management staff during Q4 of 2023 be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. Ten point three SSCA twenty twenty three twenty twenty three grant application update. Any questions on the report? Seeing none, is there anything you wanted to highlight? Uh, just quickly, uh, Q four we did have some success, and unfortunately, it did get some not so great news on uh, uh, flood hazard mapping application from uh, that we had put into the federal government. But of course, we'll keep trying on those. Um, and uh, one of the projects you'll be hearing about as we move forward, uh, Restore the Shore. So we did receive some funding from a couple of different sources. So we'll be uh, hopefully getting back on the landscape with some more stewardship, private land stewardship programming. And I just wanted to uh, do a public shout out to our SSS coordinator who's uh, in the room today, who successfully secured $10,000 per municipality from Enbridge Gas. Uh, so uh, thank you for that. That's 70000 of unexpected money coming into our yeah, water shop. Well done. Uh, and by the way, that is $10,000 you can put towards your SSS uh, cost, project cost. Beautiful. Uh, okay. Uh, given that, moved by Brian, seconded by Lori. Staff report number 5823, SSEA regarding SSEA 2023 Q4 grant application update be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. 10.4, staff report 5923, improving habitat in Southern Sound, Southern Sound, Southern Sound Watershed Project, GLL. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't, uh, other than what's in the report, the only update is that, that has now wrapped up. That was uh, wrapped up year end, December 31st. Questions, comments? Seeing none, moved by Suzanne, seconded by Danielle. That staff report number 5923, SSCA regarding improving habitat in the Severn Sound Watershed Project, GLL GLLAF update be received for information. All those in favor? Staff report 6023, invasive species program update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, two things. Um, at the end of fourth quarter, sort of the 11th hour, um, a $9,000 grant was secured to do uh, Fragmites mapping, on road mapping. So the staff did about a 2,000 kilometer municipal road mapping initiative. So that that uh, those maps will be available 
Um, also a survey of invasive aquatic species in 12 loca locations in our watershed turned up the invasive white river crayfish, which is not currently known to be widely distributed in Ontario. It's now been identified mm -hmm. at Port Severn, McLean Lake, Six Mile Lake and Sturgeon River uh, in our survey work. So yet another invasive, new invasive, and that's all for key points. Yeah. Uh, questions, comments, concerns? This is where Barry would talk about Craig Mighty. <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> uh, okay, moved by Paul, seconded by Mark. Staff report number 6023 SSEA regarding SSEA Invasive Species Program update be received for information. All those in favor? That's carried. Done point six, 6123 SSEA Weather Station update. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, the, at the end of each year, our staff summarize the weather station data for both the Midland and LaFontaine weather stations that we manage. Um, <clears throat> so that's on the website, available for anyone who wants to see it. We also provide that uh, with some extra summaries on crop heat units to the agriculture community, and so those have been presented at some AGMs for local agriculture organizations. Um, news in that report that you may notice is that we have now at no cost been granted access to three new weather stations that the local Federation of Agriculture has paid to have installed. Um, so that's a, it's a significant cost to have those put up. So for us to not have to pay to do that and to be able to access that data is great. So a big thank you to the County Federation of Agriculture. Susan? With regards to that access, will you be monitoring the same things that are being monitored now in, uh, with the weather stations? We will. Just be expanded. Yeah. Okay. Moved by Brian, seconded by Suzanne. Staff report number 6123 SSEA regarding weather station update be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. 10 7, building tree capacity in Severn Sound Watershed Project. Uh, through the chair. Um, we're still looking for landowners, uh, so that can be in uh, municipal or private land, uh, to do larger tree plants where we provide the trees at no cost uh, and then coordinate community volunteers to do those plants. So please let Michelle uh, and or Travis know if uh, you have a site that you're interested in or, or just let us know, anyone in the office. Um, and just an update on the seedling distribution program. So that uh, the distribution program is closed as of uh, middle of January, so orders are, are done uh, being taken. Um, so the, we've ordered the trees, everything's uh, in process. And new this year is a $20 packaging fee for each order. So through the Tubley and Trees program, one of the things we've been doing is auditing our own program in terms of what's working, what isn't working. This, this uh, new packaging fee will uh, put us in a position where we no longer have to put three or four staff on sorting and putting packages together. It'll be done at the nursery. It's better for the trees. Uh, it's less cost to us as an organization uh, in terms of staff time, uh, reduces, reduces stress and handling time uh, on bare, bare root seedlings. So the more chance your seedlings are gonna survive when you get them uh, and plant them. And we will look forward to having some of you volunteer to help again with the distribution when the time comes. Just out of curiosity, what uh, obviously the, there's a cost associated with diminishing number of seedlings we get? No. 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 Same number, just uh, when people are paying for their seedlings, there'll not be a $20 charge included. Okay, so it's going to, we're just passing the cost on the ground to the end user. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns? Suzanne? Uh, do we know, I'm oh, sorry, to be your chair, um, our numbers for this year? Are they about comparable to last year or is it up? I believe they're comparable. I think the, the thing that changes the most is uh, species and what we're able to get and what people want. Right. And in terms of land for the larger, um, what like what kind of acreage are you looking at? Um, I think it's, I don't know if it's in the report, uh, usually it, like I think it's 100, uh, not 100. Uh, it has to be a significant number of trees, so it would be more than we would expect a single homeowner to be putting in, yeah. uh, but we can certainly get back to you. On and my little day. farmer out in tiny bit. May work? Yeah. Okay. 200. Plus yeah. trees. Yeah, we, something like 300. Yeah, and I, I'll add, we actually have a landowner we worked with in 91, who a farmer who came back to us this year and asked to do another tree plant, so. Eight? Yeah. Robinson. 
on uh, Basie Road. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, move, moved by Danielle, seconded by Lund. Of that staff report 6223 SOCA regarding building tree planning capacity and service on watershed project. Watershed project update be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. And we will make sure we are looking for larger plots of land for trees. 10.8 SOCA passed and upcoming events. Q4, we got a couple. Go uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the two big ones coming up for us as staff Penetanguishing Rentorama and Tiny Winter Carnival Diva. And that's it. Been a lot of, lot of action, activity back out. Okay. Questions, comments? Do we do the snowball thing at Winter Ramon too? Well, the rumor has it there are, will be some new games potentially. So, Good. dump the chair. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not a member of council. <laughs> uh, sorry, moved by Paul, well, seconded by Suzanne. Staff report 6323 SSCA regarding SSCA past and upcoming events be received as information. All those in favor? That is carried. 10.9 COA project updates, stormwater monitoring, and state of severance sound reporting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So you'll hopefully remember we had some Canada Ontario agreement money through the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, which has been um, really fantastic. Those were both projects were fifty thousand dollar grants from the ministry that we were able to use towards uh, staff time to implement the project, as well as uh, the project pieces like lab load and that sort of thing. The stormwater piece was specifically to um, do a pilot on what it would look like and what the cost would look like for smaller municipalities like yourselves as you uh, look forward into implementing the new uh, CLI ECA, so mm -hmm. Linear Infrastructure Environmental Compliance Approvals through the ministry. So that report will be forthcoming. We just wanna make sure that we present to the partner municipality, which would be Springwater first, um, and then we'll have a report that will uh, hopefully go to all of you and your operations people. So there's a better understanding as that comes forward, what we might, what it looks like for us to be able to do that for you. Um, and the state of Severin Sound, we've, uh, uh, you remember you had a presentation and unfortunately the person who did that presentation, fortunately for him, unfortunately for us, he had a full-time permanent job um, away from the university. So we've switched uh, coordinators on that with a, another brilliant young person who's helping us finish up the project. And I just wanna say, I sat on the final science advisory committee meeting yesterday, which is was an absolutely amazing group that Asia has pulled together, including uh, First Nations community representation. Um, and she's got a bunch of balls in the air with 18 sections of a draft report with science, expert science staff from out, scientists from outside our organization. Uh, helping do the reviews on a totally voluntary basis. So she's got folks doing reviews um, and she's got nine Indigenous community members providing input onto those chapters as well. So certainly going to be a, an, an interesting report going forward and um, a lot of stress trying to get it completed at this point. Uh, and again, that's because it's uh, government, provincial government money, March 31st is our uh, end for both of those projects. Thank you for the update questions or comments. I just wanted to reiterate that uh, we did have that initial uh, uh, presentation from Trent University. Trent University, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, I think this is one of the ones we identified as being, I don't, I don't want to call it like layman, but I could understand what they were saying. And I think it's a report that we really need to share with the partner, uh, potentially even generate uh, individual uh, presentations for councils kind of thing. If I may. Yeah. Um, so well, point of clarification, Judy's reminding me of more than 50,000 each. One of them was more. Yes, together they're 145,000. So I think one was 70 and one was 75. Just my math's not awesome. Okay. Um, thank you. And um, on that note, in terms of sharing uh, outside, we, uh, we are looking at the budget to see if there's a way to use some of that money to do like a public facing document that isn't quite as scientific. So doing a communicating science to the rest of us. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, uh, moved by Lori, seconded by Paul. Staff report 6423 SSEA regarding COA project updates, stormwater monitoring, and state of severance sound reporting be received for information. 
All those in favor? That is carried. 11, this is executive director update, verbal. Um, I know that just came on the desk, folks. As a reminder, what I've been trying to do is on the uh, have a pie chart of where my time is spent so you can have a look at uh, where we're focused. I did want to include so that you see the use of time uh, that a significant amount of my time is spent on uh, justification, we're calling it. So when you ask us to re explain or explain um what it is we're doing and the cost and that sort of thing that's uh, where and that's just my time that's not when i'm offloading to other staff to say i need you to update me on x y and z out of that i think we've got some interesting products we haven't had in the past including um, hopefully by now you've all seen or most of you will have seen the chart that lists the services and the um, associated legislation and regulatory requirements that it's either satisfying or is directly a requirement of um, I think the only other thing I want to highlight from there is uh, from the report is the strategic plan refresh that uh, board chair and I had a chat early in January and that uh, the strat plan refresh. Uh, we have a draft from the consultant and uh, with the amount of stuff we have on our plate right now, we put that on hold. So it's sitting waiting for me to finish the review and then we'll keep moving it forward. <coughs> Question for you, Tony. Sorry, sure. 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 Um, when you talk about justification, I, I'm quite intrigued by this whole situation. I think that we're, I, I, you know, this is my first year on the board, but it feels like, and correct me if I'm wrong, there seems to be more oversight and more um, questions re regarding the return on investment. Uh, am I wrong in my assumption? Um, thank you to the chair. So you mean uh, more than usual? Yes. Uh, some years there's more, so it'll depend okay. on if a municipality has more concerns. Um, right. So sometimes, I mean, some municipalities, uh, like a few years ago, we had some municipalities asking, so we would go back and right. Uh, right. do something similar. Um, you know, I, I look at, at the association really is a social enterprise, right? We're, we're really a social enterprise that has an environmental impact. And has there ever been any kind of discussion around being able to articulate our return in investment of investment or the return in, of investment to our investors in more of what the environmental impact is monetized so a ratio to be able to explain to people okay like a regular accounting ratio would be for every three dollars we get one dollar in return is there has there ever been any kind of thought to do sort of a more um not a technical analysis but a language a analysis to be able to put a metric to what we do to easily explain and put through and an addition to our <laughs> final financial statements to provide to municipalities so it kind of makes financial sense to them instead of having to get up and re-explain how we how we provide them services I, it's just a thought um, it's I, a hard it's a hard metric to come up with but I'm just wondering if there's some opportunity to consider looking at it from that lens yeah, so I, I think that would be certainly an interesting exercise to undertake. Um, we have in the past looked at um, the things like the cost per, like pre, uh, based on your tax base. So what percent are we of uh, of the tax in each municipality, which right. the challenge for us is that's different in each municipality. Of course, yeah. So if there's a formula that you use internally to say, like, what's the return on investment for your roads department or your mm -hmm. water department mm -hmm. that we could also use, that would be absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just give that some thought as to perhaps yeah. how we could put together a metric that would make it more understandable for people who are looking at dollars. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I'll also add, we had uh, a couple years ago, we were looking, one of the staff at Town of Midland was curious uh, about this sort of um, emerging concept of natural assets. Mm -hmm. So looking at those on your asset sheet, mm -hmm. not just as pretty trees. 
Um, yeah, and uh, but monetizing them absolutely, right. and yeah. mapping and monetizing. Yeah. And there's a fairly significant movement uh, of that happening in Canada mm -hmm. with different yeah. municipalities. But there is a significant cost to that as yeah, well. Yeah, I it appreciated yeah. that yeah. as well. I'm yeah. just, I think I it's think good that's to what kind of get the concept forward. out there. Yeah, uh, because as these things do gain traction, the price will come down because then you'll have more comparables and more people sort of. Um, Figuring out how to how to um, how to come up with those numbers, so it may be something worth looking at again. Okay. <laughs> Any questions or thoughts, comments? Uh, just as an FYI, um, we uh, from a capacity standpoint, there's only so much truly to go around, and we uh, we do frequent. Uh, uh, phone updates or office updates. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, strategic plan refresh is uh, is definitely important, but there's no hard uh, deadline. So from a prioritization standpoint, I basically I told Julie if you have to drop something or push something, uh, we don't uh, we don't have to have the strategic plan done by whatever date. We push that to, to make other projects happen. So. Okay. Okay, no other comments. Moved by Brian, did by Mark. That motion 2023-099, executive director report 6523 SSCA be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. Uh, announcements. This is usually our round table exercise. Mm -hmm. Things that municipalities are doing that's cool. Uh, you don't have to share, but you can if you want. Brian, you go first. Is your budget approved? Yeah, our, our budget is approved, but unfortunately we lost our treasurer in the process. So I'm not really sure of, of the, the status, but um, yeah, we got through it and um, not not a lot of loose funding available, that's for sure. Appreciate the update, Lori. Um, we approved a two-year budget in 2023, but we're, we're going to go through a recalibration in February, so I'll have a better sense of whether we're on track. Multi-year multi budget? We remote? did a multi-year budget. Operation and cap. Mm -hmm. I like and that. And so, um, yeah, we'll have a better sense of where we are after the recalibration. Uh, but like everywhere else, it's tight. We have some staffing changes happening as well. Um, I don't believe I'm at liberty to say at this point because the formal announcement hasn't come out that we'll see a significant change in Ramadanti as well. Right. Appreciate the update. Suzanne? Uh, Penitentiary Sheen passed their budget in December, um, so we are in a good position and uh, Clicking along from that perspective, um, as you shared, where Ram is coming up, and that uh, is a family day long weekend, and uh, otherwise, it's kind of quiet right now. Uh, Tiny has ratified their budget. Uh, we were uh, 8.15 on the municipal side, 5.01 5 5 on the blend. Um, we had a protest because we're building a new admin building. Uh, however, uh, does provide some uh, some pretty cool opportunities from an environmental lens. We're looking at a net zero building. Uh, we will be reaching out uh, to SSEA, probably more specifically John at the SSS, because they do our uh, our building or sorry our GHG audits and electrical audits for as part of the uh, PCP program, Partners in Climate Protection, and uh, we'll be. Uh, We'll be after a lot of green municipal funding for this as well, which is uh, grants set out by uh, FCM, uh, federal money, to uh, to build projects that are sustain sustainable and structure within the communities. Um, I'm excited about it. Uh, obviously, there's challenges associated with a project like this, but uh, we're moving forward. Paul. So I think we're done with the uh, changeover of staff. <laughs> it appears not with. <clears throat> um, we have not started our budget yet. Uh, we get underway within the next uh, three weeks or so. Uh, we have some delegations happening at the end of February for our uh, budget uh, consideration. And uh, hopefully it'll be a fairly quick process because we have no money to spend. So it's just going to be really easy. 
Mark? And, yeah, our budget was passed in December. Uh, the blended was 2.94%. You throw everything in. We're doing our lots of homes going in Severn. Uh, we're doing an expansion of our municipal building and also looking at a West Shore rec center off the Minoki Beach Road on uh, Lake Kuchishing. So uh, I think John's involved a bit with that too. So we're just hoping we can get funding for that. So all systems go. Uh, we tried to, I tried to. Uh, okay. So spring water, we passed our budget in December as well. Um, so done and good, which is, <laughs> and all those stressful times, but good to be done with it. Um, in terms of kind of major things moving forward, we did yeah, approve the, the concept the <laughs> of our community yeah. hub, which will be a huge project for spring water. Uh, and I think we are all going to be fighting yeah. for John's time uh, in terms of looking for, yeah, some federal funding and making sure, you know, we take advantage and, you know, build environmentally friendly, um, sustainable projects. So excited to move forward with that. I feel like it, yeah. it's going to be a big project, but um, I mean, that would I'll just add that we are both faced with a rather large challenge from our neighbor, Barry, yes, we are. And that's taking a great deal of uh, the mayor and deputy mayor's time and trying to navigate those concerns that we have about yeah. the crisis. Yeah, I'll jump in too. I'm, we're not immune from that as well. Yeah. yeah. An operational <laughs> it, well, interesting not to go into that, yeah, but yeah. to build on it, one of the concerns we have from our residents is our community hub is Midhurst yes. close to those lines. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's but, a, lot uh, of, a lot of effort going into that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Assuming you're, a, good. are you chair at the moment? I think I am. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you you go. go ahead. I'm just curious. Um, how many years operating budgets do you prepare as municipalities? One, two. Like, the capital budget is usually a ten year. Yeah. A five year, but the operating budget. I'm just curious because that's what we have. <laughs> how many years do you do at a time? Just one. So spring water has moved to a two year. Two. Now that being said, the second year is approved in principle. We still yes, have... it's the very same with the yeah. format. So we okay. okay. moved to that. I believe last year was the first year we've done that. Mm -hmm. uh, We're still annually. Annually, okay. The reason I'm asking is because it's very difficult to put together a five year operating budget because by the time you get to that fifth year, mm -hmm. it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're one year. One. Okay, so. So then We're one year as well, but there's a lot more forecasting tools that are becoming available that make it a little simpler to stretch up to a two year without too much of an issue. So I think you might see over time two year being the norm yeah, both, both right. with, uh, you know, our reconfirmation on that second year and just keep going that way. Right. But, uh, yeah. Five year doesn't work. So I'm just curious when, when you do that. Perfect. Thank you. I think we need to see some stabilization. Yeah. Yes, Julie. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have been reminded something else we're doing in spring water in April is the uh, annual awards night and open house. Uh, so that will be uh, April 5th. So the open house will be uh, sort of uh, late morning, afternoon, and then evening will be the awards reception. Um, so it's at the Elmville Community Centre. Thank you very much for uh, spring water for waiving the fees on the community centre for that. That's fantastic. Um, and the awards, um, you probably all got the email, but the awards call for nominations has gone out. So please, if you know anybody or know anybody you could share it with that might have people they could nominate, that would be fantastic. Okay. Apologies for uh, missing the last few updates. My tractor, My tractor is now fixed. <laughs> uh, so we are now on to correspondence. Item 13.1, uh, correspondence from Port Manic Alliance Club, uh, thanking the staff of SFCA for helping with food and toy drive in December 2023. Uh, moved by Danielle, seconded by Mark. That correspondence from Port Manic Alliance Club, thanking the staff of SFCA for helping with the food and toy drive in 2023 be received for information. All those in favor? Hey, that's carried. Uh, and just a shout out to staff, anything like that, it's good PR, uh, looks good on the organization, looks good on our staff. Uh, so thank you, please, please keep doing stuff like that. 13.2, uh, resolution from Township Pate passed November 8th, 2023 and ratified November 22nd, 2023 <laughs> regarding verbal update 
uh, Mayor Walker regarding draft Severn Sound Environmental Association notice motion. Uh, I believe this is different than what uh, the motion you just recently passed, correct, Paul? That's correct. Okay. Uh, so this one was included in the agenda. Um, moved by Suzanne, seconded by Paul. Uh, the resolution from Tay, uh, Township of Tay regarding verbal update, Mayor Walker, re draft Severn Sound Environmental Association notice of motion to be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. 13.3, resolution number 2023-269 from Town of Midland dated November 8th regarding the 2023 budget and work plan request. Regarding budget and work plan request. Um, everyone's seen the resolution and we are going to uh, Midland uh, today uh, for the uh, budget deputation. Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, moved by Danielle, seconded by Lori. Resolution 2023 269 from the Town of Midland dated November 8th, 2023, regarding budget and work plan requests be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. And as a reminder, we, uh, we have implemented that orientation session in response to a lot of these requests that are coming forward. 13.4 uh, Resolution C 2023 456 from Township of Georgian Bay. Dated November 14th, 2023, regarding Honey Hunter, Honey Harbor water, <laughs> <laughs> water sampling. Um, this is uh, just an explanation. So Julie and I go to uh, Georgian Bay Township for their uh, our budget deputation. Uh, and obviously, since we did not receive uh, formal cancellation of the Honey Harbor water sampling, uh, we basically they've just ratified that uh, on the go forward. So that's what that is and from an explanation standpoint. Questions or comments? Okay, moved by Brian, seconded by Mark. Uh, resolution 2023-456 from Township of Georgian Bay dated November 14th, 2023 regarding Honey Harbor water sampling be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried. 13.5. Resolution 2023-517 from Township of Georgia Bay dated November, December 19th, 2023, regarding invitation for discussion. Uh, and again, as an update from this end, uh, Julie and myself have been reaching out to uh, both uh, the mayor and CAO. Uh, we have yet to set up uh, a time, uh, but uh, we're actively trying to uh, set up that date so we can have a discussion. There was uh, a motion uh, from Georgian Bay Council. And I actually, if uh, Brian's there, I, I, we watched a bit of the uh, the meeting, Brian. I wanted to say thank you for uh, the, your support. Um, maybe a little bit of clarity. Uh, the motion says uh, something about enacting the exit clause, if you will. Is that, is it, is, was the, <laughs> to, to enact the exit clause or just that you're exploring the option? Yeah, I think it's a result of having a, a, a number of new council members in this term and them not really having a good grasp on the advantages of being uh, associated with SSEA and the legislative obligations that you guys fulfill for the township. It's been an ongoing educational process. Um I don't see it as the township looking at exercising the exit clause at all. It's it's um, we have to satisfy a, a couple of of councillors um, inquiries about, you know, the value. And then uh, I think we're not going to have an issue with council. There's certainly work to be done on my end as well to, um, you know, bring everybody up to speed. But um I think that the in general one of the concerns was the honey harbor water testing because we were duplicating a lot of services and um and i think that's the reason we've backed out of that but i think we're, we're in good shape going forward you know i'm certainly going to continue to to advocate um you know for our, our membership and i think we generally have support of, of of council certainly of staff but i think of the majority of council too I appreciate the update, and uh, Julie and I will keep you in the loop as we uh, uh, set up that uh, discussion timing and 
Well, obviously, you'll be there when we come. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we look forward to it. All right. Uh, questions or comments? <clears throat> Lori. Um, thank you. Through you to uh, Councillor Bochak. Uh, it's interesting because I have a, my husband and I have a cottage in Georgian Bay, so I'm very familiar with um, sort of what goes on there from an environmental standpoint as a cottager. There's a great appetite or oversight on um, environmental aspects, especially water. So I find this somewhat interesting that council itself would be, um, you know, looking at this as deeply as it is. I noticed that they've got Dr. Pat Chow Fraser now doing the water study for Honey Harbor. Um, so I'm just wondering if you've reached out to any of the cottagers associations to get their their feedback or their understanding of this potential? Yeah, certainly great question. And uh, through you, Chair, if if I can offer a bit of insight into this. Um, Councillor Hazelton is, is the councillor in Honey Harbour, um, and he's been very inquiring about the value of the service, as well Councillor Cooper, who represents Cognachine and, and, um, and Honey Harbour area. I don't think it is environmentally based. I think the inquiries were more budgetary based and and the struggles of, of us to keep things in line financially. So the commitment is there from the Cottage Association, especially Cognachine, uh, Wauwatese, uh, even the inland cottagers, the commitment is there to the environment. It was just pushed back and looking for budget cuts. And um, I, I think we've gotten past that point now. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So that's what I was speaking to before is the linkage between those two pieces exactly. Okay, thank you. Appreciate the discussion, everybody. Uh, so moved by Brian, seconded by Lori. Uh, that resolution C-2023-517 from the Township of Georgia Bay, mm -hmm. December 19th, regarding invitation for discussion to be received for information. All those in favor? That is carried, and Mark and Julie, go. <laughs> You're being dismissed. Uh, this moves us into our other business. Uh, well, first up, we'll uh, start talking about uh, budget options regarding the Take care. Motion again. Uh, Tay motion. So I'll turn things over to the <laughs> Paul. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Through the chair. Uh, first, I want to make sure that everybody understands we're not approaching this from an adversarial point. We have some concerns on the current situation of the SSCA, the services it provides compared to when it started and what we thought it was supposed to be. Um, keeping in mind that we did support a lot of the growth, but now we're at a point where we're asking if there's, there is too much growth because we're paying for services that we don't directly require. So the question I was asked to bring up today, uh, as evidenced also by the notice of motion that came our correspondence, we want to see if there's an opportunity to open the budget as it exists today to see if there is work that can be done if approved by the board and or the executive to at least take another look at the budget to see if there's a potential of reducing the 12% increase. Maybe not, maybe the decision won't be made today. I'm looking for some kind of direction or indication from the rest of the board members on whether it's appropriate to, to go forward and at least take another look at that, another step with purpose reduction or just to leave it as is for the year. So that's my question. I have a comment. Honest, yeah. honest discussions. Yeah, please. fair enough. We'll uh, we'll open to the floor, and I have some uh, some comments afterwards too. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, so again, just my personal opinion. Um, I think we sat and put together a budget. Uh, as an executive, we worked closely with staff to bring down the percentage. Then they came with a lot of good ideas to get us to where we were. I feel that as a board, we approved it unanimously. And I think if there were concerns, whether they were concerns that you thought were going to be brought back by your council table, we should have discussed it at that point 
prior to approving it and everyone going out and now we're circling back. So in my opinion, it's not appropriate to reopen it. I think we should have dealt with it before we approve the budget. I would concur. Um, I would also concur. And as a member of the executive committee, um, going through the budget for the first time, it was not, uh, uh, I really praise the SSCA on how well they had originally come in at a much higher percentage and were able to bring it down to the 12 and the due diligence that is done in terms of getting it to where it needed to be. Um, you know, when we look at, there's a lot of historical, and I think the challenge in looking at it year over year is a challenge. And because there was some history, there was pay equity, there was a lot of things that needed to be done to get SSCA to where they needed to be in terms of as an employer, which is really important. Um, having lived through those pay equity experiences at other municipalities, when I was with the town of Midland, it's, you know, it, it's, it's an owner's and it's a legal requirement. So there's these other things that mm -hmm. sometimes are outside of the control from that perspective. But I would have to echo, it was brought to the full council. There was an opportunity to have these discussions and no concerns were brought forward and we all voted on it unanimously. So I would not support that if that one <clears throat> was brought forward today. <clears throat> right. Uh, thank you. And through you, Chair, I, I certainly feel the, the struggles that are being uh, mentioned here, but um, understandably, perhaps in our next budget, um, we should look at the levels that, that of, of service that we are offering. And perhaps in, in our next budget, this, this board may decide that, you know, the expectations from the township level is not as great as what we think it is and maybe a reduced amount of service for the next uh, go around. But I think uh, at the present time, um, the status quo was well thought out and, and, I, and I think we should stick with it. So um, yeah, I couldn't support this now, but I certainly would support a full review uh, before our next budget. Thank you. So I think everyone's had their shot. I'm going to jump in. I willing. No, I'm, I know I'm not willing to revisit the uh, <laughs> to revisit the budget, but there are some opportunities if uh, for partners, and this could be for anybody if they wanted to take advantage of it uh, to smooth that out. One thing I would like to say, and and again, I had this conversation uh, when we were going through the budget. We got left in a bit of a lurch. Uh, by the previous board. They made a shitty decision in the last year uh, to carry out opinion. <laughs> my, that was my idea. So. No, fair enough. In my opinion, uh, my apologies. And I, but it was 14% uh, was carried forward to this year for us to deal with. So uh, to, and that was to, to from reserves. Now, we have um, you have the option, we have two years of uh, source water protection, which equates to approximately $12,000 uh, that can be utilized uh, on the go forward. As well, there's also the $10,000 from uh, the grant from uh, Enbridge that we were successful in grabbing, or in grabbing that uh, any of the municipalities could use towards their SSS piece. So uh, for Tay specifically, uh, there's approximately um, $20,000 that could be saved uh, from a budgetary ask for this year without changing the SSCA's actual budget. On the go forward, uh, things that I think we can look at, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting animal in the sense that uh, we do, uh, we have started budgeting responsibly. Um, and putting money into reserves, and the uh, the last few years have been good. We found ourselves in a in surplus situations, and uh, uh, not all of the money in our reserves is necessarily what's the word unrestricted. We have protections that we put in place for well monitoring, for six uh, staff sick banks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but SSEA is almost entirely operation. We have very minimal capital costs and reserves usually are, reserve, are used in capital expenditures. Uh, so as part of what Brian was saying, as we go forward with the review piece, uh, I think we can look at using reserves to smooth things out. So we know we have costs coming with, we have a six year phase in of our staff's 
uh, getting our staff up to that 50th percentile that we all agreed upon. Uh, so we can, instead of having, if one year jump is 3%, we can look at, uh, instead of having that six years, we can make it a, use the reserves to push that, call it 10%, whatever it works out to be, <laughs> over eight years. So we, we do have the ability to do some smoothing with reserves uh, in the future, and that's something that I would advocate for. Um, given those comments, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I just want to add that moving forward. Um, I think that if you read the wording on our notice of motion that was part of the correspondence, we're probably going to want to start to negotiations moving forward based on the wording. They were, we only want to pay for the activities and options that are legislatively required and nothing more. Okay. Because we're in a situation where, um, and it's, it's not an insult, but it's like having cable TV and paying for a thousand channels where you're only really looking for fine. And that's, you know, in, I can't put it in simpler terms than that. Yep. And that's where Tay is right now. So um, I think we're going to ask moving forward that we'll get it from that perspective for our participation. So to clarify, and then we're just going to, we're in discussion phase, I guess, right now. By legislative requi requirement, um, I guess my question, because the municipalities in the Severn Sound watershed never voted to become a CA. We are not, we're, we're not beholding to a lot of that conservation authority legislation. Uh, the only thing that the SSCA offers from a legislative standpoint is source water protection. The rest of it is all the MOU that was signed between partners. Right. So to clarify, when you say legislatively required, you were only interested in the source water protection and That's not right. not to say that we wouldn't look at some of the other aspects, but not just um, arbitrarily being participating in all those projects. Suzanne, and then Daniel. So I'm not negotiating, by the way, on behalf of Tay. I'm just saying I think that right. from a start point, this yep. is where we would like to to look at this for municipal engagement. I don't think it's a negotiation. There's a contract and an MOU in place, and I think first and foremost. You know, we know it's a two-year out clause. I don't know if there's an amendment, and I, I'm not familiar enough with the MOU, but there is a signed agreement that we have to go back to the legal requirements that we're all bound by. Which uh, expires now, right? Expires this year. No agreement? Uh, What's the expiry date? Because we have not renewed it. It's, I will have to get the date. Uh, Julie is not here. Uh, is anyone... Judy, like it's no expired. No, I was going to say, I didn't think there was an expiration yeah, date just on because it. Because it's an MOU, the, the concept or the contract language is that you, every, basically, if you okay. don't enact the exit clause, then okay. it, it's a rolling two years kind of thing. So okay. it'd be like next year, if you were to put okay. it in, yeah. two years from okay. So I think that's important that that be visited, but I don't know that this is now an opportunity that it's cafeteria style and that we can pick and choose based on that MOU. So I think that really needs to be clear in terms of what that legal requirement is. Regardless of the motion that is proposed, there is a binding contract or an MOU in place that I think we really need to look at and honor as well. So I just, I think that's important. Right, but the MOU by power of the board can be reviewed for a change as well. That's not what we're discussing here today, though. So. Yeah, that, yeah. If we're we are indirectly, if, if we're going to ask you about looking at this from a service perspective, and it require, requires an MOU change, and I guess what we're asking is, could there be a potential for an MOU review? But that's not the question that you put forward. You're asking. No, we're having a general discussion. Yeah. So we're not voting on anything here. I'm right now, just because of the the, the topic concept, uh, we'll we'll bring the, the the discussion back through the chair. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so uh, first off, just based on the the clarity that from the motion that uh, we've had, I think that uh, uh, Julie and myself and or uh, a member of the executive team need to sit down with uh, Ted and uh, your staff to uh, uh, find out exactly what uh, what you're requesting. And we will have to obviously look into uh, the MOU that we have and we'll discern what can and can't be done. What can and can't be done from that perspective. 
to answer your initial question, I, and I don't think that there's an appetite to revisit the changing of the budget. However, we just provide those options. And what we'll do is we'll have uh, Julie and or Judy uh, reach out to uh, would be the treasurer, I guess, about the options for funding yeah. uh, okay. for this year. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have to revisit the uh, yeah, the existing MOU, the contract, and uh, if there is an appetite to, uh, uh, what's the word, renegotiate the MOU, I think that that's got to be not an on-desk discussion. That would be something that has to be put with notice for a, a, a meeting, so mm -hmm. significant notice of yeah. the staff and ourselves. And significant it. discussion. I understand yeah. that. We're not going to do it overnight. Yeah. I just want to close it on the, the note that... Uh, be put on record that this is not a reflection on the quality of the work that's being done yeah. by SSCA. It has nothing to do with that. It's just from our perspective, just fiscal responsibility we're trying to cover with our residents. And I wanted to uh, also apologize for my comment. It was not meant to be personal. I was just I I was I personally was upset when we went that route the last time around. So this is the first ticket. Yeah, I know. <laughs> as a as as the board chair, I should not have done that. I apologize. That's fine, Sam. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, we still have one more item. Where did that go down here? Oh, yeah. Uh, procedural uh, change. And Julie left. Uh, so I have to go on my phone. Do you have the language there somewhere? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. So at our last meeting, we had the discussion. Uh, there was some confusion over how uh, recommendations from this board are enacted by staff. So previous office administrator, from his experience, uh, basically said that technically staff do not pursue uh, board direction until ratification of the minutes. That wasn't written in our law, but there was no real uh direction as to when staff enact things so in council tables usually you have a committee of the whole or sections comes to council for ratification once it's ratified things go ahead so this is a in my opinion a housekeeping uh kind of thing and i'm happy to wordsmith it if there's issues with uh, what we've come up with uh, since we're not a municipality it's not a confirmatory bylaw it would be a confirmatory motion uh, which means confirmatory motion or resolution means a motion or resolution passed at the conclusion of board meetings confirming the actions of the board taken at that meeting. Uh, what is a confirmatory motion resolution? So this is some potential language. SSEA board enacts a confirming motion periodically during a meeting and at the end of the, the meeting to confirm all the decisions made up until the point of the motion uh, is introduced and the staff execute recommendation actions as directed by the board. Um, if there are things on an item, so say for instance today, uh, Councilor Raymond brought forward a motion or an idea uh, that uh, we don't think should be ratified here, we would just write in with the exception of item yada yada, uh, which will be referred to a future board meeting for discussion. Is there any questions, comments, concerns with that? This is an on desk and it's literally just on my phone. So I will uh, send it. Oh, we have, do we have it up there? No, it's Brian. Brian. Oh, Brian, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And I think it's a it's a good concept. I'm just wondering if there's any type of um, time involved with an appeal process to a motion being passed here. So. Um, say we we passed a resolution here or a motion here, and you're wanting to enact um, staff to carry out the direction immediately. Um, is there a, a point or is there a timeline set out where that motion could be appealed because further information comes forward, uh, or 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 we look into just as um, soon as it's passed, then then the the direction is given. So as it stands right now, it would be. Um, staff can act on it as soon as it's ratified by the board. 
Uh, if new information were to come to light and a board member wanted to uh, revisit a motion, we don't have the same. Uh, uh, losing my mind today. Reconsideration clause that most municipalities have. Uh, so that would be Brian has. Oh, Brian finds out uh, we already have. We have free money. Uh, and we uh, we need to change the direction. He'd reach out to myself, and we would call uh, an emergency board meeting, and we could change. We could make that change then. That would that to me would be the the appeal process, but it would still be a it still have to be a, a board uh, decision. My sure. my main concern. I'm I'm happy to. My main concern was that we were theoretically waiting three months before staff were moving mm -hmm. forward with action. Sure. Yeah, that, yeah, that's 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 a great point. And you know, at the municipal level, when you when you have to go through the process of rescinding, it it can, it can take some a fair amount of time. So I like this process a lot better. It's it's certainly a, a more workable approach, anyway. So thank you, appreciate it. The uh, I agree, and I think if there are items that we feel need to be to be brought back, that they that we pull those specifically at the end of the meeting before yeah. we move forward. But I think that's an appropriate thing. Yeah. So I, I, that could be as simple as we've approved the draft, uh, the, you know, sorry, we could be the budget. We approve the draft in the meeting, but we are not going to ratify it for three months. So we say confirmatory motion for all items, except the draft budget, yeah. which will be ratified. It's like the consent list. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, we will uh, we will work the language, uh, but I basically I'm gonna, I do better when I write things down. So the board recommends the addition of a confirmatory motion to the procedural bylaw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone okay with that wording? Did you capture that? Ish. That's the I four. Yeah. Recommends the addition of a confirmatory motion to the procedural bylaw. <laughs> Okay, uh, I should have relinquished the chair for that, shouldn't I? Yeah. I'll get better at this. <laughs> I'm telling you when to stop. <laughs> yeah. um, does anyone want to move that? <laughs> Paul, Danielle. You guys are supposed to keep me in line too, right? <laughs> uh, all those in favor? That is scary. Uh, and we will get that language sent out by email to everybody. Homework items are, I will be sending out um, a list of questions for Julie's performance review. Again, thanks, Suzanne. Okay. And also, formally, if you didn't catch that, Paul is now appointed by Tay as the alternate. Uh, so Paul is a voting member when he is here. Uh, just to clarify, though, if you only have one voting member from municipalities. You both may choose to come, but uh, this is how it goes. Uh, one of the things that uh, just anecdotally that we've uh, we've noticed uh, is Michelle still with us? Or did she bounce? She's good. Yeah. So we, uh, Tay Township uh, has, uh, oh, it's not Tay Township, or Madante, my apologies, Lori, has uh, one of their staff members that is their alternate. She just doesn't feel comfortable being a voting member, but she's uh, attending the meetings. And uh, what we have seen already has been an uptick from staff utilizing uh, the services that the SSCA has. Yeah, it's, it's working really well. And so just an FYI, in Tiny, we have this basically the same person uh, uh, acting as the liaison between SSEA and municipality. So Tim's our director of public works and water. And Michelle does water and public works, right, Lori? Yes. Uh, and the, the two seem to jive uh, from, uh, from a lot of the services that are offered. Uh, obviously, planning departments work. Uh, well, too, because we uh, we do the environmental assessments for new developments and such. So I encourage our partners to have a staff member make themselves available if they can to come to these quarterly meetings uh, in the future. So I've tried to get Tim to do it. He won't do it. So I understand if they don't. But, uh, with that, is there anything else that anybody want to talk about? Did I miss anything, Nicole? 
I can now tell you both the staff announcement <laughs> <laughs> or because I just received it. Uh, so it's public that our CAO Robin Dunn is retiring after 16 years oh, oh. Uh, in Oramadante. So we will be on the search for a new CAO. Which, I wonder if I can do that. Keep your hands off. Keep your hands off ours. <laughs> Brian, Brian, nobody practices predatory hiring. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get out of here, guys. We got, uh, we got Julie and Mark being hung out to dry over there. Uh, motion 2023-105. This meeting of the SSA Board of Directors held on February 1st, 2023, adjourned at 11.40 to meet again on April 25th, 2024, or at the call of the chair. Moved by Paul, seconded by Suzanne. All those in favor? Thank you very much.